Hello and welcome back to your favorite stop for calculus. Today we have a very beautiful integral. I mean, look at this thing. I believe it's rather gorgeous. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of the sine of the square root of negative log x dx. So yeah, it does look a bit strange, but honestly, strange things are quite attractive, especially in the context of, well, particularly in the context of integral calculus, that is. So what exactly are we supposed to do with this thing? Well, we have to solve it. How do we solve it? Well, logarithmic substitutions are often quite useful because they change the structure of the integrand quite nicely. It's nothing too complicated most times. So let's take this root negative log x term and let this thing equal to u which implies that negative log x equals u squared, of course, and this further implies that x equals e to the negative u squared. Okay, cool. So this would imply that dx equals negative 2u e to the negative u squared du. Now, what about the limits of integration? We see as x approaches 0, we know the logarithm approaches negative infinity, so in this case we have u approaching positive infinity. And as x approaches 1, we have log x approaching 0, so in that case u approaches 0. And this implies that the transformed integral is the negative of the integral from, neg uh, from infinity to 0 of the sine of, what is this root term? It's u multiplied by e to the negative u squared times 2 times u du. Now the limits look a bit strange over here, so we're going to switch them up, and that introduces an extra negative sign that cancels out the one we already have. So we have 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity. Rather, let me write this 2 as part of the integrand again. So I have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine u times 2u times e to the negative u squared, terribly sorry about that, du. And this new integral is quite easily solved using integration by parts, because this thing here is the differential of negative e to the negative u squared. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from 0 to infinity of sine u d e to the negative u squared and applying integration by parts. Wait a minute, a negative sign here. That's okay now. So applying integration by parts gives us negative e to the negative u squared sine u, limits being zero and infinity, minus, but they cancel out, so we have the integral from zero to infinity, of e to the negative u squared times cosine u du. Now for the limits over here, as u tends to zero, we have sine of 0 tending to 0, so that thing collapses, and as u tends to infinity, this exponential term goes to 0. So this whole thing collapses to a big fat 0, which implies that i is now the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared times cosine u du. So the final boss for today's task is this really cool integral that looks like a cosine transform of the Gaussian function, or a Gaussian transform of the cosine function, Whatever you want to call it, it sounds really cool either way. And this kind of integral can be quite easily solved using Feynman's trick, so we're going to define an integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared times the cosine of alpha times u du. And what exactly is the motivation behind defining the integral function in this way, that is, inserting the alpha parameter into the cosine function? Well, if you differentiate partially with respect to alpha, the cosine of alpha times u term, we get negative sine of alpha times u, and because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha, on applying the chain rule here, we get negative u. And this negative u term is quite useful because we have e to the negative u squared. So we get a structure on which we can apply integration by parts. So now that we have a plan in order, we can differentiate with respect to the parameter, and we can totally switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators because this integral function converges thanks to this Gaussian term which acts like a damping factor.
Anyway, we now have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of e to the negative u squared times cosine alpha u du. And this thing equals the derivative of i with respect to alpha. So on differentiating, we now have e to the negative u squared times, we already saw what this thing evaluates out to, it's a negative sign here, with u times the sine of alpha times u du. Okay, cool. So what if we write this as negative one-half times the integral from zero to infinity, rather one-half times the integral from zero to infinity, of sine of alpha times u times negative two u times e to the negative u squared du. Again, we see that we have a differential element. In this case, we would have d e to the negative u squared. So we have one half the integral from zero to infinity of sine alpha u d e to the negative u squared. And on carrying out the integration by parts, we have one half times a bunch of stuff, which is e to the negative u squared times the sine of alpha times u with the limits being zero and infinity minus the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative u squared and differentiating sine of alpha times u with respect to u, we get cosine alpha u and this factor of alpha as well. Okay, cool. Again, this thing collapses to zero. And all of this implies that the derivative of i with respect to alpha equals negative alpha by two times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative u squared cosine alpha u du, which we immediately recognize as the integral function itself. So we have a really nice separable first order differential equation to solve. That is i prime equals negative alpha by two times i. So to solve it, we have di by i equal to negative one half alpha d alpha, and integrating gives us on the left-hand side log i, and on the right, we have negative alpha squared by four plus a constant of integration, let's call it c. Okay, cool, but rather I'll write this as log c, that way, on the right-hand side, I can write this first term as the logarithm of e to the negative alpha squared by four plus log c, which implies that we have log i equal to log c times e to the negative alpha squared by four, which implies that i here equals c times e to the negative alpha squared by four. Okay, cool. And all we have to do now is determine the constant of integration c. And for that, we'll recall exactly what our integral function was. That was i of alpha defined as the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative u squared times the cosine of alpha u du, a very convenient value of the integral function would be for the case when alpha equals zero, because that gives us i of zero equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative u squared du, which is, of course, the Gaussian integral, sorting out to root pi by two. So plugging in alpha equal to zero gives us on the left-hand side root pi by two, and this thing is supposed to equal c times e to the zero, which is one, and there you have it, we have the constant of integration. So this implies that the integral function i of alpha equals, what exactly do we have? We have root pi by two times e to the, neg to the negative alpha squared by four. And the target case would be alpha equal to one, which gives us the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative u squared times cosine u du, and this thing equals root pi by two times e to the negative one quarter. And this does look pretty nice, but maybe we can clean it up just a little bit more. We write this as one half times the fourth root of pi squared. And in the denominator, we have the fourth root of e. 
which implies that the target integral i equals quite nicely one half of the fourth root of pi squared by e. It's been quite a while since we saw our two favorite transcendentals within the same final solution, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well for write-ups that come in handy uh, for my videos. And in case you like the channel, if you want to support the content I'm putting out, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.